Hi, today we'll be talking about our project, which is to predict sales of cigarettes for British American tobacco in Hanoi, Vietnam. And I am June. Um, I, my group members include me, Kuren, Kiran, and Ravi. And uh, we would go through project scope and approach, data preparation, um, you know, model, model selecting, model building, model assessing, as well as you know, recommendation and uh, lesson learned from our project. First and foremost, what is the business issue? What is our project objective? We want to predict cigarette sales for Hanoi, um, Vietnam distribution, as, um, and we want to look at the center city of Hanoi for convenience channel. Our target variable will be the sales of premium, premium um, cigarette sales in sticks, in groups, and absolute values. We wanted to use different frames, work of time, as well as different features of the stores. We would use cross-industry standard process for data mining, which starts at first by looking at the business issue and proceed by looking at data, um, by, look at, uh, by looking at an, an understanding data, and follow up by data preparation as well as modeling. This is a evolutionary, evolutionary process in which we keep going back and forth until we reach a good point where we could reach evaluation. <clears throat> Who benefits from this? American Tobacco is the one that benefits a lot from this, including management, um, sale representatives, as well as other, okay, um, other departments as well, such as marketing. They benefit from the cost saving as well as revenue and profit through the promotion. Analysts like us and analysts of British American Tobacco also benefit from the expertise as well as from the prospect for change. There are also intangible benefits such as uh, the employee retention as well as customer relationship management that the company could gain from this project. There are also some, on the other hand, there are some constraints and limitations to our project. First, we only look at convenience channel. We don't look at other channels such as wholesale. Because from a business standpoint, convenience channel is the one that makes up for the most sales of the company and very well reflect the business nature of the company. So to be very business relevant, we pick convenience channel only. We also have just one year of data, which is also another limitation of us. There are some tangible as well as intangible costs to this product. And this table here, is the breakdown of the tangible costs, including the cost of labor, software, equipment, as well as equipment um, depreciation. There are also some intangible costs of the cost of every uh, the cost for go by analysts while performing this project. To assess the feasibility as well as risk of this project, we'll see that it is very feasible, feasible technically, economic, economically, and operationally. The company, company has a good data and data management, which allows for technical feasibility. It has very well approved analysts that it outsourced to, which is, you know, has a lot of uh, tools and techniques to use. And uh, in order to market this to the company, we would market it to the management board as well as present it to other conferences. So to recap, our scope proposal is to look at the sales of British American tobacco in Hanoi, Vietnam, in the central city, and in convenience channel. Our methodology is cost industry standard process for data mining, and our process, our project lasts for 101 days. And following here is the project schedule of our project. Next, Quinn will be talking about data preparation. Hi, now I will talk about the data preparation process of our project. Uh, we assess the data from the company sort with three different data set. Customer list, sale quantity of the um, company by date, and check in and check out time at the outlet. Uh, the reason why we choose these data sets is because um, we have good understanding of the data, relationship, and also the company situation. And we want to break it more and learn more from the real data in the business world. And for data consolidation, uh, we have to do a lot with uh, converting data from old format to new format and then 
combine it using R and Python table for aggregating, and finally we combine all the different data set using for sequence set. For data cleaning, um, to deal with missing value, uh, we uh, decide to ignore the missing value for modeling purpose of checking and check out five in week in week five because it's not a holiday week and then we will impute using the result from modeling and uh, also we omit the uh, zero values in the cell by the file uh, for some negative value or extremely high value in visit duration uh, we, uh, does not contribute uh, very much in the total number of observations we also omit it uh, we also do some assessment for data type in outlet ID and date and time. Also in data transformation, uh, we change the quantity of cell you need from pipe into state so that we can combine all the more than 20 different product lines into one. Um, we do also some um, formatting and create new variable for our modeling purpose, including premium sale category, uh, non-premium, and um, visit duration as well as some very, very, very important variable for time, including weekday, month, and call time. For data reduction, we reduce the number of observations from customer list from 40,000 into 10,000 so that we, we would use the selected outlet for filtering purpose and then we reduce greatly the number of observations in check-in and check-out file from 3 million into less than 1 million observations and the same thing applies for sale by date file so that we reduce the number of observations remarkably from more than 7 million observations into less than 1 million. In the final most data set only contain more than 700,000 observations. And for model selection, we understand that our data set have a lot to do with sale, revenue, and cost. And uh, because the total product life and premium segment have so many things in common. And because of, because that, the contribution of non human cell into the total cell is not so much, so we decide to use premium cell as target variable, um, which has very high skillness and kudosis, um, and we also group it together to reduce um, the uh, skillness and kudosis, and we have new variable of premium cell being Finally, we come up with three different models. Decision tree and logistic regression have a target variable as categorical of premium sale. And the last model, time series exponential smoothing, using target variable as absolute value of premium sale. And now, Karen, we talk about model building. Thank you, Karen. Next, we are going to see about the model building factors. The decision tree and the logistic regression were built using IBM SPSS modeler. Initially, it was connected to the data partitioning node in which 70% of the data was used for training. This was because we had around 700,000 records and we need to train the model well enough so that it understands the model well. Next, we just used the input node for selecting the input variables into the models. Here, we had the measurements and then selected the variables which are need to be given as input and tar target as well. Then these filtered data were given as inputs for both the models, like here in the regression model and here in the decision tree model. The parameters for each model were se set separately. This is the first model that we are going to see, that is the decision tree model. In this, we selected the surrogate levels to be 5. We didn't dig into so much deeper data because the number of records were high enough and we just wanted to see what are the most important factors that are going to affect them. Next, we selected the impurity measure to be Gini. 
the genie gives us an estimate of how much the number of variables selected are going to be wrongly interpreted. The entropy method was not selected because the input variable had more number of values that are not distinct enough. The validation data was used for the analysis of the results. Here we can see that the standard deviation is 0.2 in the training, testing and even the validation data. So it gives a good data for us. Then we saw into the importance of the variables that are used in this project. First we came to know that volume is the most important factor. The volume in a sense is the volume of the shop which is going to be selling these products. The next important variable was found to be the month of sale. The month of sale gives us was defined by 12 different values for each particular month. The decision tree gives us a detailed report for this. There are various factors that could be analyzed from this and if you could take for example say this, this one as the factor we could interpret it like if the month is going to be 2 that is if it's going to be February and the team ID is going to be 0 that is there is no team or representative then there is going to be 7.42 percentage of sales probability that could be predicted well. The next model that is built is the logistic regression model. For this model we included only the main effects and we used a multinomial procedure because the target variable had four levels. The variable importance was also studied for this model and we found that van ID is the most important factor. Van ID is the representative ID who is going to the, the each specific outlet and going to market the products. The next important variable was found to be the month like in the decision tree model. Apart from this, we studied about the model fitting parameters and the parameter estimates. The model fitting parameters gave us a significance of 0 0.00 which explains us that this model is very good compared to the baseline model. Also coming to the parameter estimates, we could see that there are some variables that are not significant like the month which has a 0.257 significance and subtype and quality. So we need to work on this when we are going to assess the model. The third model that we are going to see is the time series exponential smoothing model. In this model, we are just comparing all the and the target variable with the timeline. The model was run in SAS enterprise manner and we selected R square and average square error for a selection criteria. This graph explains us with R square as the selection criteria. R square in this model gave us a value of 45.13 percentage. That means this model predicts 45% of times the correct value of the target variable. When we are taking the average square error as a selection criteria, it gives us 52.29 times the correct output variable. The next part is going to be model assessment, which is going to be continued by Mr. Ravi. So now we uh, see the model assessment part. Uh, uh, so the first one is the, for the selection of the variable of uh, premium sale bin where we have selected the com compared the decision tree and the uh, logistic regression model that we ran. So um, when comparing these two models, we got the result as a decision tree that, that was selected as the best model. This was based on the misclassification rate criteria, uh, where uh, you can see the decision tree uh, has the least uh, misclassification rate compared to the regression model. And with this result, we compared it with the time series model and uh, as uh, uh, we scored the data and from scoring the data we saw that decision tree model had a better scoring compared to the logistic regression model. Now moving on to the selection of the models with, the, with respect to the variable premium gross sales tick. So, uh, since uh, uh, we had to go by the uh, time series model here and uh, we can see we um, uh, as Kiran mentioned about the average square error and the R square criteria. Uh, the results are displayed here from the two tables on the top where uh, the R square for the average square error was 52.29 and the uh, R square uh, for the R square criteria was 45.17. So out of these two we can see uh, the average square error criteria has uh, better R square compared to the other one 
And with respect to the time series graph that you can see here, this was based on the um, R square error, uh, average R square error as a criteria. Uh, as you can see from the graph here, uh, there's a peak uh, right close to the end of January or February, starting of February. And uh, there's a downfall uh, close to May, April that is because of um, holidays and uh, because of which the sales representative would not uh, visit the outlet. And uh, this, uh, this is, uh, we have lots of ups and downs in this graph, which is because of the uh, time ID is selected as day. And so we have a lot of observations here seen in the graph. Uh, moving on to the strengths and weaknesses of each models that we saw till now. Um, for the decision tree, we do not have to impute the variables. Just that's because uh, decision tree will have a separate branch for imputation, so we do not manually have to do imputation. And uh, um, the other, uh, pro the, the main problem here is overfitting of the training data uh, because of additional splitting split nodes. That's the main problem with the decision tree. Uh, with respect to logistic regression, it is easy to predict the values with the regression equation that we get. Uh, in terms of uh, predicting the target variable, um, if the input, if one of the input variables change by one uh, particular value, how much does the target variable change? And uh, it is the main problem, uh, the main weakness for logistic regression is it's not a very good model with in terms of categorical variables. And with respect to time series exponential smoothing, uh, the main advantage is, is, is focuses on the forecasting uh, part of it. And uh, since the company is uh, data is in terms of seasons and day, and forecasting is a better um, in terms of this kind of a data. And uh, uh, it, it is also simple and produces more jagged curves. Uh, with respect to talking about the best model that we came up with, uh, uh, in terms of decision tree over regression, uh, we chose decision tree as we saw because of the lowest misclassification rate. And it, is, it has better accuracy and it is also goal oriented. Um, in terms of scoring the data as we saw earlier, it is also better compared to regression model. And coming to the time series model, uh, we can uh, it, it is best with uh, in terms of the interval variable that we have and we can have the time ID as uh, each day as we saw from the graph to get a more a better accuracy of the model and the two best models that we saw here was uh, decision tree uh, with respect to predicting the sales pre or, or the premium uh, brands and uh, the time series model with respect to the pre premium gross sales tip. So let's look at our, how our project evolved throughout the time. Our target variable at first we thought would be the cigarette sales outcome. But along the way we found out that in order to do that, in order to look at the sales outcome, we would need to look at the premium sales. We also found out that in order to do effective analysis, we needed to look at both absolute value and group value. Specifically for decision tree, like Kiran already told us earlier, um, our target would be the, the bin value or the group value of four levels of premium sale. And we also found out that for this analysis, volume, month, and call time were the three most influential factors. And we suggest the company to look at these to uh, plan accordingly for their sales target. In terms of time series now analysis, we still used our absolute value. And we found out that there are some months such as February and April that the company might want to look at to adjust their um, according to adjust their sale target accordingly. For this project, we earn we learn we learn a lot. We learn to use a lot of tools and techniques such as IBM SPSS modeler, SAS, Tableau, R, and we also learn that documentation is the real big thing for a project, and so as data cleaning and data preparation. Um, we also learned that teamwork, time management, and uh, also communications are those that we need to uh, master. And we owe these lessons to Professor Hammer for his help and support throughout the semester. Thanks for your attention, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us.